Today is 6th September 2022, and we are now at room 5T023A, Passenger Terminal 1, Hong Kong International Airport. The time now is 18.49. I'm Inspector Chung Yun K of the Hong Kong Customs and Exercise, currently deployed at in Airport in Investigation Group of Customs Just Investigation Bureau. These two are my colleagues. Please introduce yourself. I'm Inspector Yu Ho, currently attached to Airport Investigation Group, Customs Drugs Investigation Bureau. I'm Customs Officer Lo Ka Ko, number 1993 of Ms. Taya uh, Susanna, for the purpose of record, please state your name and your passport number. Uh, my name is Susanna Thayer and I don't know my passport number without looking at it, I'm sorry. Okay, then I'll show you. Is that you? Is that your passport? Yes, it is. So, uh, please speak loudly your passport number. AS3173110. Okay, thank you. And I now remind you that you are still under caution. That is, you are not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. But what you say will be record, uh, video record and may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Yes, I do. So, would you like us to, um, how would you like us to address you in this video? How do you want to address me? Is that what you said? Uh, with high, just call you call you Susanna? Call you call me Susanna, that's fine. Are you in a good condition? Do no. You want to... <laughs> I'm, not. Uh, I'm not healthy at all. Okay? You're not healthy. What kind of... What I healthy? have heart disease problems. Mm. I have arthritis, bursitis throughout my whole body. Mm. I broke my wrist a year ago when I was in BC at my daughter's and it took and it's just starting to heal now, but it's off by 10 degrees, but I've got a pain here because this part here is hurting me, and I got ailments, okay? I'm not a healthy person. Have you saw a daughter these two days? Pardon? Have you saw a daughter these two days? Uh, yeah, you guys, I told you guys I was on medications, mm -hmm. which I had with me, but I was refused my medications. Uh, so you took me to a hospital to get something that was similar to what I was taking. It's not exactly the same. Mm. And I can tell the difference just with my, my body So you, you, you saw the daughter yesterday, right? Well, yeah, temporarily, like real quick. Okay. He just saw the pills and gave prescriptions for what he felt would suffice. Have you have to take some medicine? Yeah. Okay. So you're now in a condition well, I'm not in healthy condition, okay? I'm in a lot of pain because sleeping on that hard thing is not great for my back and my neck and my shoulders. I'm in a lot of pain at night. Okay. So, can we go on? Yeah, you can continue. I'm just letting you know. Okay. So, uh, to facilitate record keeping when you answer the questions. Pardon? To facilitate the record keeping. When you answer the questions, please speak loudly, your answer and clearly. Yes, I will, as long as uh, they're not incorrect questions. And do not express yourself with movements such as the um, hand gestures or head nudity. Do you oh, understand? Oh, really? Yeah, I understand that, but that's not easy to do. Just speak loudly. Okay. Okay. Um, did you agree to conduct this video interview in the absence of your legal representative? I would prefer not to, however you told me I have to, so. Mm. so, so I'm answering it honestly. Yes, I know. But do you agree to conduct this interview in the absence of your legal representative? I mean, if there is no lawyer, will you answer any questions? Or will you feel good to conduct this interview? I feel like I can answer some of the questions as long as it doesn't plop some form of implication that I may misunderstand in the question. Mm. 
Yes, I know. Okay. So, yes, I will answer the questions without legal aid here, but if there is a question that has been misunderstood because I have hearing issues, mm -hmm. and with your language dialect as well, it makes it difficult for me to understand completely. Okay? okay? Just putting that out there so you're aware. Yes, it's fine. So. So what you say is like, oh, we'll keep going for this interview? You can keep going for the interview, for, however, yes, yes, uh, I may abstain some questions. Yes, of course. If you feel not good to answer any of our questions, you could remain silent. Or you, you could just say, I have no comment about it. Okay. Okay, cool. That's so fine. So we'll keep going for this yes. interview without the legal representative. Is that okay? At the moment, yes. Okay, cool. Okay, can I continue? Um, and now we'll introduce the functions and the, of the system of the video feed interview. What? I'm sorry, you're going to have to talk very slowly. Okay. I will introduce the system and the function of the video interview. Oh, okay. Okay. And this interview will be recorded on four separate DVDs. Okay. Which means that everything okay. is recorded and legally yeah. binding. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And I get one that. DVD will be given to you. Huh? And and one DVD will be given to you. One video will be given to me? One DVD. Okay. This, a disc. Okay. Okay. And on on conclusion, you will be given a written explanation of the usage of arrangement on the four DVDs. Okay. Okay. So the purpose of the four DVDs, I'm going to be explained afterwards. Yeah, on the paper. I just want to make sure that I get the context correct. So, um, for the reason of record keeping, please recognize this one. Notice to persons in casualty, and it was read and signed by you at 7.38 on 5th September. Yes, I did sign that. However, I signed it only because I was told I had to sign it in order to uh, continue the process so I could make a phone call, which I never was allowed. Mm. So you recognize this? I do recognize this, even though I disagree with being charged with something that I had no knowledge of. Okay. Then here is a post record statement earlier that you are taken by an other customs officer number one five two zero zero. Yes, I do remember seeing that, and I did have a rebuttal on him because she did not state to me that I was being arrested for drug trafficking of any kind. Okay, you can I had no idea what was going on. Okay, you recognize this document. But I do recognize the document because I did put my two cents in it. Okay. And I'm letting you know that. Do you need to read this once again? No, it's quite all right. I do know what's on there. Okay. You know what's the I contest. am trying to make sure I'm very full alert as to what's happening here. Okay? Okay. Because I don't want any mis misunderstandings with you. Of course, yeah. Of course. And an other document for this one? This is a preliminary inquiry for the in immediate follow-up investigation record earlier with you. Yeah, Miami. she came earlier today and talked to me about so it, yes. So you can recognize this document. I do recognize that document. You understand the content and please also recognize the signature is by you. Yes. Okay. And did you agree the content of the statement? Mm, somewhat, yes. Not all. And at the last page, you have the signature here and the declaration, right? Yes. Okay. Plus, on the very last last page on there is James K. Wood's name with my signature below it and date. Okay. Yes. Right. Good. Okay. Um, on the 5th of September 2022, you were intercepted by a customs officer at the Green Channel of Custom Arrival Hall upon baggage examination. Suspected dangerous drugs were fine. Can I make a comment? 
I wasn't intercepted. I went to her, actually, because I wasn't sure where I was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's not like she stopped me and said, oh, you've got to do this now because you're, you've got drugs on you. No, it wasn't like that at all. It was just a normal, I thought was a normal routine mm. check because I go through normal routine checks coming here, right? Mm -hmm. I went through two when I got in this airport. Mm. And um, I wasn't aware that I even had drugs on me in my bag. I did not know they were in the buttons of the tops or those, those mm. dresses. I didn't even know how many dresses I had, and I'll tell you right honestly. So, let me continue. Oh, go right ahead. Sorry, I'm um, sorry to upon, interrupt. Upon the baggage examination and suspended dangerous drugs were found inside uh, inside the buttons of a batch of dresses. Yeah, I just mentioned that. Okay. Uh, since we suspected, you have to commit, you have commit an offense under the dangerous drugs audience. Okay, you say I committed an offense, but I know, I we feel suspected. like I didn't. We suspected. What? We suspected you to have suspected. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. What I said. Then you you were therefore arrested and cautioned. Okay. Uh, with 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 regard to this incident, I have some questions to ask you. Uh, but I remind you, you are still under caution. And that means you are not audited to say anything unless you wish to do so. But what you say will be recorded and may be given in evidence. You understand? Yeah, I understand that. Okay. Um, first, I will ask you for the information about your personal and your family background. Then I will ask you some questions related to this case. Okay. Okay. So tell me about your education background and your occupation. Well, I just became a writer. Right. Last year, I retired. My husband passed away in 2016. He died in his sleep. I sold my house to my daughter. And I ended up meeting a chap online. And his name was Dr. Williams Walter who I didn't realize at the time I needed someone in my life. My husband had passed away, I was gone for about four years at this point. So you are now retired? I, I, I was married for 45 years. Can I say, are you unemployed? Because a writer is not really a job, right? Well, no, I guess I'm unemployed, yeah, well, I'm, well, just, I'm, I'm retired. Like, I'm yeah, retired. No, no, yeah, 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 so I just wanted to yeah. clarify about it. Yeah. But anyhow, I met this gentleman, doctor online. He ended up manipulating me, making me feel like I was, and I fell madly in love with him, I'll be honest with you. I ended up writing a book about it because I found out after he had conned me out of $206,000 that so, uh, what? I was screwed, okay? And I ended up having to go into a consumer proposal because it put me in eighty thousand dollars worth of debt and basically what happened was is the OPP are now investigating it it's a high profile crime that's being checked through cyber whatever and through this process this is what I'm getting to is I ended up meeting James afterwards okay. now I am desperate I believe in my heart that I am still desperate to have someone love me. Okay? Um, okay. Maybe be just focus on your background, your family background. Well, this is my family background because my family hates me now. Okay. So, can you tell me some something about your financial status? Finance? I just told you I'm in consumer proposal $80,000 debt, which is down to 20000 which I'm paying on a monthly basis with my husband's pension. Okay? 20000 It's like down to 20000 that I owe. A month? No, not 20000 a month. It's $350 a month okay. I pay. 
but it's a total. It was a total of twenty thousand for the debt once it went through consumer proposal. Okay. And basically, I can sustain myself this way. Okay. I'm not a materialistic person at all. I don't believe in having a lot of glamour and whatever just to survive. I, I'm simple, okay, in that respect, okay? I learned to live with nothing, okay? And I'm happy with myself. I mean, I feel bad that I can't help people sometimes, okay? Because I do wear my heart on a sleeve, and that's what my best friend would say to you, like, this girl here, she just loves people. I'm a humanitarian, okay? I love to help people. And I met James after I met this great doctor after my kids decided to disown me, which is in my book, and I'm not even sure where my book is right now, because it was called I've Been Conned, a book for dummies, and I did bring a copy with me, but I didn't see it anywhere in the stuff that you made me sign. However, if it wasn't for James uh, Kaywood, I would have had a hard time finishing my book and in the end of my book he is the facet that brought it together for me he ended up trying to come see me twice the first time he ended up having COVID so he couldn't make it the second time uh, he was going to the airport in a taxi and two gentlemen apparently tried to shoot him the taxi driver ran out of the car, got shot. He went down and was okay, but they ended up catching the two guys and found out that it was Dr. Williams Walter who ended up creating the thing to stop him from coming to me. So then he thought, and I said to him, I said, you know what, I'd be ha just as happy being where you are, you know, in a war zone. You know? Where is it? Okay. Then where, where where did it happen? For the for the uh, oh James? Indonesia. He's in Indonesia. Okay. So can I rephrase something? Because there is a, a long story, right? Yeah. So what you earn? Can can I say your earning is uh, depends? I on make around forty thousand a year. Okay, forty thousand. Is it so? I'm comfortable enough that I can live on 40, it. Forty thousand is like USD. No, that's uh, Canadian. Oh, Canadian. Okay. So is it like uh, from your husband's compensations? Yes. Just as you just said. Okay. So other than that, is it like uh, no other incomes? Uh, no. Okay. Cool. So after that, let's go to James again. So I heard you about uh, was Dr. William, sorry. Can you Dr. Williams Walter. Waters. Okay. So is it like, uh, did you see him before? Or is it related to this case? To no. To this trip? Okay. Uh, no, because... He's even, he even hacked into my phone. I was in BC at my son's place, at my daughter's place, and he ended up going through my grandson's girlfriend's text because I was going to add her to my email. And there was a message from him encrypted underneath when I went to go pull it up. All of a sudden I caught this message, which I ended up taking a picture of and sending it to the OPP police department because they're investigating this, you know, because it's a major crime. What happened to me? But and I ended up writing a book because I wanted to help people so that they don't feel alienated, that they don't be labeled, that they don't go through what I did, the pain, the torture, and all that kind of stuff. And right now I just feel like it's happening all over again because all of a sudden, I'm being accused of something here mm -hmm. that I had no foreknowledge of, period. Okay. Can, I, can I ask how many family members you support, uh, region you have? Like a daughter, how many daughters or how many sons? Uh, do I support? I, they, they all support their own selves now. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, how many But I have two daughters have? and okay. one son. My son dis... Uh, dis uh, what, what do you call it? Disassociated himself with me. Okay, like not not contacting. He kicked me out. Yeah, well, he thought I was a thief and a crook because I got conned, okay. even though I was the one that was conned out of two hundred and six thousand dollars. Not living together. What? Not living together. No. 
My oldest daughter, she I'm living with her right now. Oh, you're living with your eldest Oldest daughter. right now. Okay. Okay. She's letting uh, me stay at her house. Okay. Like, and my like other daughter in, lives in BC. In Canada? Yeah. Okay. So, so if uh, William so Walter... So money, money, money is not a problem yes, for Yeah, I'm just okay. clarifying it, okay? okay? So for William Waters, it's not related into this case, right? Like, it doesn't relate it at all for this case, for, for your trip to Hong Kong. Oh, oh in Obama. a sense, I, in a sense, I think in the back of my mind, I was hoping that maybe I might bump into him because I told him, uh -huh. I did tell him, I said, I'd rather you t look me right in the eye and stab me yourself because he threatened to kill my family, he threatened to kill me, and I was just hoping, James didn't know about it, mm -hmm. but in the back of my mind, I was hoping that Dr. Williams Walter would have... Mm -hmm. Related to this case, but it's, the truth is not, right? Yeah. Okay. Just, but in just in in essence, yeah, that was in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I am being as honest as I possibly can with you. Yes. Okay. Can can you tell me why do you fly to uh, ADD? Oh, uh, because James bought me a ticket to go there. James. So James at the, uh, so at the first place, you actually you were actually in Canada with your yes. daughter. Yes. So how how would you meet James actually? How? I met him on the internet just like I did with Ms. Dr. Williams Walter, okay? The internet, okay. Mm -hmm. So did you meet him before? No. Not at all? Like once? Well, I video chatted with him online. But is it, is it like him? Pardon? Is it like him? Is it like a, a, a real person to face to face yes. during the he video? Is a, he is in the military. Okay. So, so he's never met? Okay. Uh, personally, no, never met. Okay. Yeah, but you did, really never you did communicate with him, like yes, like, face face. on the phone, uh, by text, and we like video interview. Yeah, we've done video as well. Okay, so for him, uh, can you describe the relationship uh, if for James and you between G James very and close? You? He's totally into me. He loves me with all his heart and soul. If you read any of his texts or messages on my phone. I'm into him. He wants to marry me as soon as he sees me. He's hoping to be here in Hong Kong. I'm not sure how many times he may have tried to text me or whatever through. Um, so let's go. Let's get back to uh, how you make your trips to Addis Ababa first. So James paid, arranged, paid, arranged, and paid, paid for it. And this gentleman, Eric, or whoever it was, met me the first night I was here. Well, sorry, when, when, when did you be at Texababa? I, I don't know if it was the 12th, 11th or the 12th. I don't know right at the moment. You'd have to check. Like, like a month ago? Or like in August or which month? What are we in? September? What day is this today? Six. Yeah, so it was Six August. Of yeah, August. It's August. So in how August. long did you stay? How long did you stay? Three weeks. I was there just over three weeks. I came on a Friday. I landed on a Friday. So where where will you stay in uh, Addis Ababa? Mm, it, I can't pronounce it. Is it like the same Y hotel? Y I N something? Is it a hotel? No. Or yeah, it's a hotel. It's, it's a, a hotel. hotel. Are you staying? Uh, were you staying in like Inum or something like that? I think. Were you staying uh, like uh, at the same hotel all the time? Yes. Okay. Over the three weeks, I stayed at the stay same hotel. In the same hotel. Yes. So uh, the staff got to know me really well. Who paid for the hotel? Uh, it was prepaid for when I first got there, apparently. Um, and this guy Eric was the one that came and paid more because. James was supposed to come, didn't make it, so they had this guy Eric come and pay more money, asked me if everything was okay, did I have everything I needed, was I eating, blah, 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 and I was fine. I said, yeah, everything's fine, I've been taken care of, but, you know. But who's Eric, actually? Who's Eric? He was a liaison, as far as I'm concerned, for the company that James hired. So I could say, to get the tickets and everything out. So can I say, James sent Eric to you for arrange everything, like paying everything, like 
paying the hotel, yeah. take caring of you, like uh, giving you some uh, expense maybe. Yeah, yeah at first when expense? I first got there, he gave me uh, forty five hundred of their e e b dollars or whatever you want to call it, so that I can buy food or whatever else I needed, which wasn't a lot of money, really in their money, but I used that just basically for food. Mm -hmm. And I, it lasted me the whole time. Like I said, I don't spend a lot of money. Well, for just one time? Like, yeah. he, he gave you something? Yeah. Can I say, like, pocket money or something? No. No. You just, you just, but uh, you James just... said that he was going to have him drop some money off for me so that I'd have money. So oh. I wouldn't have to worry about it. So, so it, I was going by what James told me. Do, do you know the reason why James didn't come to? Uh, apparently his commander uh, was waiting on someone who was supposed to replace James Kaywood's uh, position from the States and the guy was trying to convince his wife to, that, to let him go. Is he, okay, that's what he told me. But did he clarify where is he? Where, where was he? Where was he? Like the time when you have been at this Ababa? Oh, he was in Indonesia. Like all the James, time. he's been in Indonesia. Like, the like whole August time. and September, he's he was yes. saying he was in Indonesia. Yes. For military. Yes. So you say he's for military. Yes. Right? As a matter of like fact, um, before I went to United States. Before I what? Military of the United States. Yes. U.S. military. Okay. So he's like a soldier or something. Yes. Because if you look at my phone, there is a picture that he sent me uh, from Sunday when he went to church because it showed up on CCTV. And on that picture, he points out, oh, this is me in the picture. How many times you met Eric? By video chat or whatever? Uh, Eric, in person. Eric, Eric, Eric. Oh, Eric? In person. I think he was there four times altogether. Four times. Yeah. 